All right, this is how I make my little apparatus for doing oxalic acid vapor treatments in my hives. Uh, I get asked about these a lot. Uh, they're very quick, very easy to put together. They're very quick, very easy to use to do your treatments in the hives. Um, the oxalic acid goes in there, little chamber, drilled hole in the hive, you stick that in, heat the bottom with the torch, vaporizes the oxalic acid, goes into the hive, quick and easy. You don't have to worry about lugging around batteries, power cables, none of that. All you need is a torch out in the field. Very simple. Um, construction of these is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's three quarter inch copper pipe, two end caps, and a short section of threaded brass pipe. In this case it's a uh, eighth inch. I usually use three inch. I ended up buying a four inch because they were out of three inches. Um, and that's all there is to it. Cut your uh, three-quarter inch copper pipe roughly four inches long. I mean you can go a little bit longer. It doesn't really matter the length. Um, I find this length is about right. Um, you'll notice that when I attach the uh, smaller pipe I do it a little bit higher. That makes it you know a little bottom heavy so when I put it in the hive you know, I know which end is up, which end is down. This end's going to be fixed. This end obviously needs to come off so you can recharge it between between doses. So all we got to do is drill a hole into the uh, copper here and use a 3 8 inch drill bit to do that. And basically we just force thread this into the hole that we drill. There's no need to tap this or anything. We're just going to force the threads in with a 3 8, 3 8 inch bit. You'll see here. It digs right in, comes out the inside, and that's plenty strong. Pretty simple. You can't do a just a straight solder fit on here. This, the uh, temperature that we're working with when we're doing the oxalic vapor, it'll remelt that solder. We're going to put some solder in there, but that's only just to plug up the threads so the gas doesn't escape while we're doing the, uh, while we're doing the treatments. But the solder is not in any way supporting this. You'll notice as you use them, the stuff softens, reliquifies, and just doesn't really do any holding. Um, so we're going to do that real quick. I'm going to drill, uh, I'm going to drill my holes in here and show you how I get these together. All right, we got our four inch section of pipe here. I put an end cap on and just mark where that's going to land. So I know to stay out of that area when I'm drilling the hole. So there's a mark for our cap. We're going to go just a little bit below that so we remain bottom heavy down here. I use a center punch nail set really just to give it a little tap that helps helps start the uh, drill bit. Easy peasy. few little taps to get it started. Kind of a tap and turn situation. The only thing you can do at this point flip it over really torque on it. Alright, all right, hopefully you can see in there. You can see the ends sticking out. You don't have to go all the way through with the threads. You just got to get in there enough that it catches good and tight. Okay, that's the, that's going to be the top. Then we do the bottom. Now remember I said we don't do we don't do solder joints on these because the solder will soften too much in the usage and it'll just fall off right in the middle of heating the stuff up and that's no good. So how do we keep this on here? This is a very technical process. You put it on there and you smack it out around with the hammer, just enough to dent it. And then you turn this 
and now you got a friction fit and that won't drop off on its own top comes off no problem bottoms on there pretty good we are going to go ahead and put a little bit of solder in each of these but honestly that's only just to block the vapor from coming out while you're using it um, it's again it's not going to be in any way supporting this so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick beautiful weld joints right oh yeah all right so here it is in operation always wear your PPE face mask glasses I heat the uh, brass tube first, just a little bit to keep it from getting, uh, keep the oxalic acid from condensing inside there. So we'll do that for 20 seconds or so. I just heat it right at the joint. Now just move the heat to the very bottom of this. You're going to want to angle your torch so you don't set your uh, hive on fire. I suppose that's one risk that you're going to have with this. Be cautious, just as you would with anything else. All right, you see a little puff of steam as it drives the moisture off. One minute in. Minute 15, you can see the vapor starting to shoot between those two frames. Now this is just a single medium box set up right now so you're not going to see the vapor really trail through all of this and yeah, if you're running a double brood chamber with bees fanning it all around you'll see it's a much better distribution in there I mean I've just got plexiglass over the top but you can see the vapor billowing up inside there and it's starting to escape out the edges a little bit here Now, two minutes in, it's pretty much done. All the vapor will have gone in. This is going to be way too hot to touch. Now, the beauty of this is you make five or six of these. You go along, you do one, you leave it. You go along, you do another, you leave that one. By the time you come back, this should be cooled down enough. You can take it off and move on to your next hive. It's pretty simple. Probably not as quick as one of those easy vaps, um, but again, you, you know, you're... You're free of, uh, free of the cord, and this works well enough for me. Right, and you see, I didn't quite get the distribution of the whole vapor, but you can see it definitely vaporized. We got the vapor all through here. Again, with a bigger hive, an active hive, they're going to be fanning it, and it's going to be blowing all through there. It's still a little bit hot, but I just want to show you. And now we're... It's all gone. And if you preheat the tube... If you preheat this uh, pipe right at the joint here, you won't get too much buildup. You can occasionally get some buildup inside here, especially on a cold day. Uh, just a pipe cleaner or a stick, just clean it out a little bit. But yeah, I mean, it's vaporized, blew into the hive. On to the next one.